The title of my message this morning is When We Pray, Things Happen. And in this context, I'll be encouraging all of us together to believe that prayer is not a wasting time, but gaining time. It's not a time where we just can't wait till it gets over, but it is a time to truly allow the Lord to speak to us and to do what only He can do in and through our lives. Things happen during prayer. Sometimes we get discouraged because we don't see them happening as fast as we wish they can happen. But things happen in prayer. When we pray, something happens spiritually. God answers us. We see miraculous things. We see how God moves among us. Somebody once says that in prayer, more things are done than what we can do without prayer. In prayer. It is amazing. I was watching not too long ago. I was listening to a sermon of a preacher from Korea that has the largest church in the world. And he said that most of his day is being spent in prayer. He wakes up 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning until about noon almost. He prays. And you can think, man, you have mil a million people, a million members. And you would think that you would be busy with everything going on. But no, he says that most of my time is spent in prayer. And that just gives me hope that sometimes we try to avoid prayer because we think I need to do something. And sure, we have responsibilities to do. But I'm convinced and I'm learning like never before that more things can be accomplished in prayer than what we can do without prayer, just man's idea. And this morning, I want to encourage all of us to show up during this time, to fast and pray, to fast and pray. And as Pastor Tim said that fasting is a goal, the goal of fasting is to draw near to the Lord. That's what it is. God, I want to draw near to you. And the Bible says that he will also draw near to us. Praise be to God. Prayer is to be an honest prayer. God knows everything about us. Do you know that? Sometimes we come before the Lord and it's almost like a switch that happens. And, and we tend to be very, very, very religious people that learn the prayer, the right words. And at times, it's not that we do not know, but we're not aware in that moment that God already knows us. Before a word comes out of our mouth, before a thought even comes, He already knows everything. Last night we had bunch of people over and just spending time in fellowship and in prayer and before we went to sleep we had Mary D and Salam they're friends of ours they're visiting from time to time so we had a bunch of children around so we said well let's pray before we go to bed so we decided to pray and uh, all the kids we asked them if you would like to pray so everybody raises their hand they would like to pray so I ask permission to share this story okay because it's one of the most honest prayers I've ever heard through a seven-year-old girl. Most honest. And the prayer went something like that. I wish I recorded it. But I witnessed a raw and honest prayer that I never heard this kind of prayer before. And the prayer went like that. Dear Jesus, thank you for letting us get sugared up today. <laughs> and this is her prayer. Thank you for letting us get sugared up today. And when she's saying that, she's not like, you know, ashamed. But she's like, thank you for getting or letting us getting sugared up today. She's like moving with her hands and, and very passionate. And then she proceeds. Thank you that we saw cookies and chocolate. And we had the opportunity to steal that and put it in our pockets. <laughs> <laughs> and she's praying and I'm looking around and we're just laughing. But she's so animated and, and says, thank you. We stole that and put it in our pockets. Our pockets were full. And we ate all of these things. Thank you for that. And now we're sugared up. Thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> and I was like, man, you know, thanking God for even stealing cookies. I don't know about that. But I appreciated the honesty of that little girl. That even though she did something that she's not supposed to do. She still came before the Lord and let him know that I did this today. Instead of saying, forgive me, she says, thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> but often in our lives, how important it is that we can come to a safe place before God and thank him and pray for the things we're going through and ask forgiveness for the things we have done wrong. Amen. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 
verse 1 and down says this. I urge then, first of all, that petition, prayers, inter with intercession and thanksgiving be made for all people. The Bible says that we are to pray. And not just to pray, but make petition for all people. James chapter 5 verse 16 says this. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Another translation says that effective or the fervent prayer of the righteous man or woman avails much. But I like this, this other translation that says that the prayer of a righteous person is powerful. And not only that, but it's also effective. If only we can grasp on that. That our prayers are powerful. And not just powerful, but they are effective. We might not see it in a moment, but they are effective. I'm reminded of a scripture during the Elijah's time when, when the Baal and all the idols were there. And they were worshiping, the nations were worshiping the idols. But it came a moment that there was a challenge. Who, which God is going to answer us by sending rain? Which God is going to answer us by sending fire on the altars? And I love this scripture that it says that Elijah, he rebuilt the altars. Sometimes we have things in our life that we know they're destroyed and, and we know we need to take care of them. And this is what Elijah knew that there was things that were in ruin and he needed to rebuild those stones. And during that time, the 12 tribes of Israel, they were not united. They were divided. But it's a sign of unity that he shows that he pulls the stones of, of the 12 tribes of Israel. He brings them back together what everything is all about. It's one purpose. It's unity. That only can come from God. And I love this word that it says that Elijah said, everything I did according to your word. Now you send the fire. You see, it's a responsibility that we have. And the Holy Spirit has been giving to me and to you to live this life according to the word of God. We're not called to walk on our own, but he has given us the ability, the power of the Holy Spirit. And we can say, God, I'm walking according to your word. Now, do the impossible, do the supernatural, because I can't do what it takes on my own. You have to do this. And the Bible says that in this scripture, in Elijah's time, the fire of God came and God was glorified and people said, God is the living God. He is the only one. And they began to follow him. How much we need that in our lives. To understand and to grasp on this truth. To say, God, I have a desire to do everything according to your word. Give me the ability to do that. Growing up in a big family. I think out of all, I was the most mischievous kid. I think I was the most challenging kid growing up. If things did not make sense, I question them. If we're just doing things just to do things, why are we doing them? And a lot of things, it's okay to, to ask questions, but a lot of times it can come from a, a heart that is not totally in line. And the purpose was to challenge the parents and to challenge my older brothers. And, and I found myself in a, in a period of my life for years that I was just one of those kids that, that was challenging. A few weeks ago, we visited a family, and during our time at the table, they had a 13-year-old son that started acting up. He had a couple of friends, and you know, when we were growing up and we had a couple of friends over, we just wanted to show that we are the man of the house, right? It doesn't matter who's there, the parents or whatever, we can get away with anything. And I began to, to witness a picture that I felt uncomfortable. Mom and dad are saying, hey, son, do this or don't do that. Give me this or come here. No. Why? I'm not doing that. And it, I was like, man, that was me. That was me. And after that son left, I began to encourage those parents not to give up. I began to encourage them that, listen, you pray and God can do things. This kid reminds me of me. I was like that. And if God can do a miracle with me, he can do a miracle with your son. Because they're like, we don't know what to do. They're in ministry, they're working, they're, they're doing all those things. And, and yet they're, 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 they're having challenges with a 13-year-old son. But I reminded them, you can't do nothing on your own, but in prayer. And I began to share how God changed my life through the prayers of my parents. One time I remember when I was running around the house and I, 
opened the door into the living room and I found my dad on his knees with his hands lifted high. And he was praying for us. And this is the picture I remember growing up. Yes, we got a little spanking. I call it, I said years ago that in the former Soviet Union, everything was discipline. In America, it's abuse. <laughs> but let me tell you, that discipline worked. <laughs> that discipline worked. But I remember those moments that they knew that, listen, even the discipline is not helping. We need to pray. I remember one time when I was struggling in life and going to the right, to the left, and, and doing things and, and just live a, live a life how I perceived it to be right. That my mom was fasting and praying while cooking for us. Can you imagine that? The food, the smell. We're asking you to pray and fast for the next few days. And we have such a hard time. But can you imagine she was cooking for us and during the time she was fasting. How tempting that was. But one time she was weeping before the Lord and I opened the door. She did not even knew that I went into the house. I just came into the house and I went downstairs. And she was so engaged in prayer that I found her before, right before the stove, kneeling while cooking. Everything is boiling and she's on her knees crying out to the Lord for her children. And I'm convinced prayer works. Hallelujah. And I'm not telling you fairy tale stories that I just heard. I'm telling you stories that I have experienced in my life. Because what I'm at today, it's only by the grace of God. From a kid that was wild, from a kid that was disobedient, from a rebel to a pastor now, God can do miracles. Hallelujah. And that's why we're going to gather and pray. We're going to be praying for a filling of the Holy Spirit. We're going to pray for our children. We're going to pray for our families. We're going to be praying for our spouses. We're going to be praying for our marriages. We need God. We need God. And without prayer, we're not going to be able to make the days that are ahead of us. There is violence and chaos all around us. This morning I read on the news there is another mass shooting. There is another problem. There is another protest in Georgia. Everything is on fire. We cannot face what we face in the day we live in without prayer and without God. We need Him. We need Him. We need Him. And God is allowing things around us maybe to draw us back to that point of prayer. I'm still learning, I'm not perfect, but I find myself often walking, mowing, cleaning, whatever what I do, I just pray in my mind, in my heart. I cry out to the Lord because I know that without Him, I can't do what I do. We need Him. What happens during prayer? I just want to take a few scriptures, just encourage all of us to know and be reminded that prayer works. When we pray, miracles happen. Miracles happen when we pray. The Bible says, if you can open up with me, the book of Acts chapter 3 verses 1 and down. And it says over here, the book of Acts chapter 3 verse 1 and down. When Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of fellowship. Does it say that? At the hour of hanging out. At the hour of, of just spending time together. It doesn't say that. It says that they were going to the temple in the hour of prayer. It's amazing when we have that mindset of prayer. When, when, even when we walk to the temple. When we walk and come to the worldwide prayer meeting here on Wednesday. Even before that God can already begin to speak to us. He can already do miraculous things. Because our mindset is already in line with Him. One of the prayers that I hear often, Pastor Carter prays our overseer. He says, God, help us to be aware of your presence today. Because sometimes we can live our days and just not that we don't know that he's with us, but we lose that awareness that he's with us. But how much can change in our lives if we're always aware of his presence. And over here it says that, that Peter and Jim, they were walking to the temple in the time of prayer. And during the journey... They saw a lame man and he was asking alms. There were many people that passed by that man that went to the temple. They were very busy to come to the temple to pray and to worship. But something was lacking, a lack of power to transform, a lack of power to see miraculous things. And over here we see that this 
mighty man of God of faith says, listen, I don't have what you're asking me for finances, for these coins or for all this help that you're looking. But listen, what I do have, I'm going to give it to you. In the name of Jesus, get up and walk. Hallelujah. And this is what I said before in the beginning of the message. That through prayer, prayer, we can avail more than what we can possess physically. The easiest thing probably it was for them to say, here is five, five dollars and move on. Maybe here is a meal and move on. But they said, I don't even have that. But what I do have is more valuable than those things that can buy you a meal. It is healing that only can come from God. And I wonder where did this came from? It came from a time of prayer, I believe. It came from a time where they were spending with Jesus. It came from a time where they were, they were grounded. And Jesus was even asking them to spend time in prayer. And whenever when they spent time in prayer, they did not need to come to a prayer meeting for miraculous things to happen. But miraculous things happened in their lives before the prayer meeting. And I want to encourage you, my brothers and my sisters, that you possess and I possess the power of the Holy Spirit. That when we pray, things can happen. When we walk to the store, when we go to work, when we can lay hands on the sick, they can recover. You don't need to bring people to church to see miraculous things. We are the living church of Jesus Christ that can lay hands on the people and God can answer. <laughs> Hallelujah. I think we're hiding for so long behind the scenes, thinking... That God can only move through prayer, through only special people, through pastors or deacons or whatever. Only through those that are up front. No. God has left the church of Jesus Christ here on earth. And it says, the power has been given to you. To you, my brother, my sister. To you and to me. To do all of these things that Jesus did. And more. Hallelujah. Before the prayer meeting, the miracle happened. Let us not come only with expectations and bring people just in church services and think that only the pastor can do all of those things. The pastor can pray. No, you take the courage. You take the courage. As Elijah said, I live a life according to your word. I have done everything according to your word. And when we live those kind of lives, I'm telling you, God is going to show up. God is going to show up because he says, now you send the fire. It is not us. When we live our life according to him, to the word of God, he will back up the word of God. Hallelujah. Another thing that happens when we pray, deliverance happens. Deliverance happens when we pray. Acts chapter 12 verse 1 says this. Now about that time Herod the king stretched out his hand to harass some from the church. And people are being harassed today all around the world. The believers are being harassed. And over here later on in verse 5 of here it says that Peter was therefore kept in prison. They put Peter in prison. They began to harass certain leaders. They began to harass people that they were gathering together to pray and to do what God has asked them to do. To be his disciples and to make disciples. And over here I love it says over here in verse 1, in verse 5, Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayers was offered to God for him by the church. It did not say that once a week or, or once in a while, but constant prayer was being lifted up for Peter. Constant prayer was offered to God by the church. And I want to encourage you and myself to say, God, help me, help me to constantly pray. And sometimes we have an idea of a prayer as I had an idea of a prayer when I was growing up. That the prayer is only when you stand on your knees and you put your hands like this and you must close your eyes. And trust me, I'm teaching my kids the same thing. But sometimes we can find that prayer is that and that's it. We make a form of prayer and if that form is not happening, we're disappointed. But I want to encourage you that God can hear you at work. God can hear you driving. God can hear you in your office. God can hear you standing up, sitting down. God can hear you laying down. God can hear you. Just pray. Begin somewhere. Just pray. Don't look for a form, but look for a relationship with God. Look to talk with Him and to tell Him all the things that is on our heart. This is what He is looking for. 
We made sometimes out of prayer a religion of a form, but it's a relationship with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm in constant relationship with my wife, and then we go on a date. But we made the religion of a prayer, the date, only once in a while. No, it is a form of a relationship daily. Daily. And the Bible says over here that constant prayer was being lifted up for Peter. And later on the Bible says that deliverance came into that prison. God opened the doors and miraculously Peter did not even know what fully is going on. And then he realized, I am free. I am free. And how much they did in prayer. Can you imagine if these people said, well, Peter is in prison. Let's go protest. They could have done that. That's what Christians do today. I don't like this. Let's go protest. Let's put a plaque and, and show up and walk around. Let our voices be heard. Let all the politicians hear us. I'm not saying there is not a time for that. But when we don't pray and we do that, we miss it. We miss it. But over here, they did not say, let's go protest. Let's go try to break a window to get him out. But they said, we know where the power possess. Jesus Christ can do more when we pray than when we can stand and walk around and protest. And they began to pray firmly. They began to gather together and pray for Peter. And miraculously, he was delivered. And he was freed. Hallelujah. And I want to encourage you. Whatever prison you might face. Whatever prison your children might face or they might be in. Pray. Let's gather here tonight and pray. Let's gather here tomorrow and pray. Let's gather here on Tuesday and Wednesday and pray. And believe for God to open up those prisons supernaturally. Because when we pray, deliverance happens. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because then we know it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And I'm telling you, it's not just a scripture. It is a scripture maybe that we hear, but it's not just a scripture that we just hear and just get encouraged. It's the truth that we can experience. By the power of God, we can see mountains being moved. By the power of God, we can see our children delivered. By the power of God, we can see our children walk with the Lord. They don't have to experience the world. They don't have to go to that age of rebellion like I did. They don't have to go through all of that. By the power of God, we can believe him for him to keep our children. Hallelujah. We don't have to have a powerful testimony. How everything was in the world and now they're walking with the Lord. But the most powerful testimony we can have, the most wonderful testimony, it is how God kept us. How God kept our families. How God kept our children. And this is the testimony that I am looking forward to here. And as the worship team comes... In my closing, when we pray, revelations happen. The Bible says without a vision from above, people live long. Right? Does it say that? Without a vision from above, people become crafty and they will live very well. It says no, without a vision from above, people perish. Perish. And where do we get that vision? It's not how many years we have college. It's not how many years we lived. It's in prayer. It's when we call out to the Lord. Jeremiah 33, 3. Growing up, we knew this scripture. And it says, call to me. And I will answer you. It's a promise. And I have to believe that. Because if we don't, we're in trouble. But it's a promise from the Lord. Let's embrace it, even when we struggle. When we call to the Lord, we call to the Lord and He hears us. When we say, Lord, I come to you. It's not like you didn't say something right. I'm busy doing something else. No. When we call upon the Lord, He hears us. And I love this verse over here. It struck me. It stands out to me in a new way. It says, and I will show you. You see, where God is showing things. When God is showing things, when you call upon Him. It's a condition. It says, when you call upon me, I will show you. What will I show you? Great and mighty things. The things that you knew before? No. Which you do not know. And this is what happens in prayer. When we call upon the name of the Lord, God reveals himself to us in a deeper way. Revelations happen about who he is. Revelations happen about his word. Revelations happen about his promises. 
When we call upon the Lord, He will show us great and mighty things because He is great and He is mighty. And in the relationship, when we call upon Him, He says, there were things that you did not know about me. But now in a prayer meeting, I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to talk to you. And I'm going to lead your life. Prayer has power to feed the captive, deliver the bound, and reveal God's truth to us over and over and over again. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 says this. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace. The word confidence here. It's not that we have the confidence in ourselves. We have confidence in Jesus. That he did everything for me and for you. Everything for me and for you. Because without Jesus. We would never even approach the holy God. But because of Jesus, now we can have confidence to come to the throne of grace. That we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. A commentator said this. That in time of need could be understood as at just at the right time. Just at the right time. You will find grace just at the right time. I like that. Are you going through things in your life? That you desire for the Lord to show up. He can. And he comes just in the right time. He's not late. He's not early. We live in the United States with everything is by appointment. He comes on time. He comes on time. STC Summit were joining our main campus in New York City. During this four days of prayer and fasting. We encourage fasting as a spiritual next step. That can bring clarity and revelation into your life. This is the words from Pastor Tim. And this is what it is. I want to read this again. We encourage prayer and fasting as a spiritual next step that we can bring clarity or that God can bring clarity and revelation into our lives. That's why we do this. The goal of fasting is to draw nearer to God. Tonight we're going to be praying for the power of the Holy Spirit. We cannot live without the power of the Holy Spirit. And yes, I know that the power of the Holy Spirit has been given to us when we got born again. But we need more and more the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And there's a difference. There's a difference. I don't want to just stop there when I got saved. I want more. I want more. I want more. Tomorrow, we will be praying for the power of deliverance. Tuesday night, we'll be praying for the power of salvation. And Wednesday night... We'll be praying for the power of calling. And all of these things we need like never before. For God to answer us. Father, we thank you for this morning. God, preparing this message, I began to examine my life. I never want to preach something that I don't live. And you see my struggles and my shortcomings, even in this context, what I shared this morning, would you help me? To grow, help me to find myself always at your feet, never to think that I have arrived. God, supernaturally, I am where I'm at today because of your grace and because there were parents and brothers and sisters that pray for me. God, miraculous things happen in prayer. Protect me from ever thinking that it's something that of my own, that I have arrived where I'm at. It's only by your grace. Lord, let the prayer meetings in this church grow. Help us, O oh Father, for us not to try to make time for prayer, but to prioritize our time so we can come to prayer meetings. Lord, but it starts from our homes. It starts from those places where we are alone. Help us, oh God, when our mind goes a million miles an hour everywhere. Give us the grace to concentrate and to pray. Help us, oh Father. Help us, oh Jesus. God, let this house be always called the house of prayer. This is our desire, oh Jesus. I pray that you would hear us and you would answer us as your word promises us. That when we call upon you, you will answer us. 
Lord, and this is what we're doing right now. This is what we're doing at home. And this is what we're going to be doing tonight when we come into this sanctuary. Hear us, oh God. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. This is not a time for arguments and theological points and all of those things, even though it has its own place. But this is a time for us to realize that we are bankrupt without you. We are empty and lost without you. And we need your Holy Spirit. We need your Holy Spirit. Forgive us in the moments where we push prayer aside because it looks too foreign to us. God, forgive us. Where we were so busy trying to do things and, and prayer was lacking. In my life, in our lives, God forgive us and draw us nearer to you. Draw us nearer to you, God, to understand this truth. That in prayer, we can do more things than we can do without prayer. Because this is the moment when we rely upon you. And the Holy Spirit has to do the supernatural. God Almighty, we have the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that Peter and James had. When they said in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. All of us, God being born again, we possess the same Spirit. But cause us now to live according to your word, oh God. Cause us now to believe for the impossible. Cause us now to grow spiritually, oh Father. That when we pray, things will happen. And give us the grace not to touch your glory, but protect us from ourselves. God Almighty, we come to you and we're asking you these things in your name. We come to you because you said you will do all of these things for those that pray. That you will answer us. And we cry out to you because you possess the power to do all of these things. Help us, oh Father, before we come to a solution, before we think that we can take matters in our own hands, always to find ourselves in prayer. In prayer about different matters of our lives. As the church was praying for Peter to be released from prison, from captivity, God, we pray for our children to walk in freedom. For our, for our children to live this life to taste and see how good the Lord is. God, it's an action of each person. And help us as parents, help us as grandparents. Help us as young people, oh God, to exhibit those truths. That we have tasted and seen how good you are. God, we desire more of you. Oh, we desire more of you, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We need your Holy Spirit. We need your Holy Spirit. God protect this church forever coming to a place where we're trying to impress people. Oh God Almighty, let it always be in simplicity that should be spoken. But also you be glorified and lifted up. Let your presence be always be known in this room. Let there be transformation of people, of the hearts and the minds of people. Let there be healing in this room that people will come and find healing. Forgiveness of their sins and wholeness in their mind, in their marriages, in their homes. Oh God, we need you. Would you do it? Would you do it, oh God? Would you do only what you can do, oh Father? We love you this morning.